This lecture is about AWS code build. We will see what it is, how it works, and have a lab session about how to build a sample code. AWS code build is a fully managed build service on AWS cloud that compiles your source code, runs unit tests, and produces artifacts such as jar files, war files, zip files, etc., that are ready to deploy. There is no need to maintain infrastructure for your build servers. AWS abstracts out compute layer from you. You just need to provide your code to build. Code build is highly scalable and processes multiple builds simultaneously. And if you remember our CI CD diagram in our overview lecture, code build will fall under build phase of automation process, continuous delivery or continuous deployment. An important component in AWS code build is build spec. It is basically a YAML file which contains a collection of pre-build, build, post-build post commands which will be used to run a build. We will go through this in our lab session. AWS code build supports Ubuntu and Windows operating systems as of today. This might change in future. AWS keeps adding a lot of features frequently so it is a little hard to keep up to date. And code build provides pre-configured build environments for the most popular programming languages, which means, for example, Java, it installs JDK and JRE on the build environment. And for Node.js, it installs Node Package Manager for you on the operating system you choose. And then you just have to run your build commands. These are the programming languages, .NET, Android, Base, Docker, Golang, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, and Ruby. And if you want to access any resources within VPC, such as RDS database, on which you would run some integration test cases, by default, code build compute environment will not have access to these resources within your VPC. For such cases, you can configure a VPC and a subnet in which you would want to access these resources. VPC enabled builds are then able to access resources inside your VPC. The Jenkins plugin for AWS code build enables you to integrate code build with your Jenkins build jobs. So instead of sending your build jobs to Jenkins build nodes, you can use the plugin to send your build jobs to code build. This eliminates the need for you to provision, configure, and manage Jenkins build nodes. All right, let's see how this works. With AWS code build, you first need to create a build project before you want to build anything. So once you create a build project, you can then start building your code either through console, CLI, or SDKs or you can use AWS pipeline as part of automation. Code build uses the build project to create the build environment based on the configuration which you chose, such as Ubuntu operating system and then Java or Node.js runtime environment. So once it sets up the build environment, code build then downloads the source code into the build environment from any of these source control systems, which are AWS code commit, S3 bucket, GitHub or Bitbucket. And then code build uses the build specification file as defined in the build project or included directly in the source code to build the package depending on the programming language you chose. And if there is any build output, the build environment uploads it to AWS S3 bucket. And while the build is running, the build environment sends the information to code build and Amazon CloudWatch logs. You can use the code build console, AWS CLI or SDKs to get summarized build information from code build and detailed build information from Amazon CloudWatch logs. So using code build, you can build many such projects in parallel and you'd never have to worry about the compute or scaling up the infrastructure. This is how at high level code build works. Now let's perform a lab session to build a Node.js package developed on React framework. For us to build the code, 
we need to have a code in any of the source control systems, right? I'm using AWS code commit as all our lectures concentrate only on AWS ecosystem. So let's go to code commit. And I have this repository with demo react.js. And if I open, you can see the project structure. Well, this is a Node.js based project on front end framework called as React. Well, React is a framework developed and maintained by Facebook and quite popular these days along with Angular. Well, if you have no idea what this is, don't worry. This session is not about learning React. Our focus will be on how to build the packages using code build. Anyways, I will briefly go over what this code does. I'm using Visual Studio Code. And this is a project structure, precisely what you see in code commit, except for some folders which are excluded via git ignore. The main file in here is app.js, which contains bulk of the code. Well, this precisely makes a call to API gateway get method and fetching data and displaying in the UI. Remember our API gateway lecture where we had users resource. What we saw in our API gateway lecture is a get method to fetch only one user based on path parameter. I had added a new method for get under users to fetch all the users through another Lambda function, just like getting a single user. The main difference in the Lambda function is that I'm using DynamoDB scan instead of DynamoDB get item. So scan gives you all the records in a particular table in DynamoDB. And this has been deployed to prod stage. And if we access the URL for getting all the users, there we go. We can get all the users as an array. And what we are doing in this code, we are simply looping through each user in the array and displaying a user component with the respective user values. Well, component is a building block in React. This is not so important for this lecture, so let's ignore that. And I've created a couple of test suites so that we can run them before our build to see if the code really works. And this is important, the build spec.yaml. This is a specification code build will run the build on. If you do not know YAML syntax, well, it's just like JSON, a key value pair, but more human readable. The core building block for YAML is indentation, meaning the spacing you need to follow. In here, variables will be the child object of env, and ci is child object of variables. For example, this key value pair in here will become this if you convert to JSON. So you can define any environment variables like this as we are using one here. And then phases object is the important one code build looks at. So code build starts executing the build by this order. Your build status will be fail if any of these phases fail. And important thing to remember, the build exits only if you return a non-zero exit status code. Otherwise, even if one phase fails, and the status is reported as failed, the build will continue with the rest and complete all the phases. Example, if your pre-build commands in here, let's say npm tests fail, you must make sure you exit the script with a non-zero exit code. Otherwise, it will go ahead and build and upload the artifacts to S3. So first phase is install, wherein you can install any additional softwares I'm doing npm install to download all the required packages specified for this project. And then you can use pre-build phase to perform any tasks such as unit tests, integration tests, or if you want to copy certain data before you execute build, etc. And then you have build where you can provide your actual build commands. And then at the post build, you can perform some cleanup activities, etc. So these are the phases. And then you have artifacts wherein you can specify which files to be uploaded and what would be your base directory to upload them, etc. So you can put this willspec.yaml file directly under your source code or provide this during configuring the build project in AWS code build. So we will be keeping in our source code. And before we start building the code using code build, let's first manually see what we are going to run using AWS code build. Let me delete this folder first. So if you run npm test, which is our pre-build command. Now 
you can see there are a couple of test suites and uh, seven test cases and all of them are successful and then next if we run our build command which is npm run build and you can see it created a build folder with these files in it now this is our build output artifacts and these are the ones which should be uploaded to s3 bucket after the code build is successful so to put this code into perspective this is how it looks like it fetches all users and displays each user info as a simple component well we have nothing to do with this ui in this session though but we'll come back to this in coming sessions. All right, now that we have seen what we need to build, let's build a code build project. Let's go to AWS console, search for code build. So this is a landing page for code build, similar to what we have seen in code commit. It will be under developer tools and you can create a build project from here. So let's click on create build project. Let's give it a name. We can choose if we want to enable a build badge. Well, build badge provides an embeddable dynamically generated image that displays the status of the latest build for a project, just like a certification badge you carry. Well, I won't enable it for the demo and we can also add tags from here. And here is where we choose our source code. I will choose code commit and then our repository. The git clone depth in here creates a shallow clone with a history truncated to the specific number of commits. If you want a full clone, choose full. And then we can choose the build environment from here. We can either use AWS managed image or a custom Docker image. As discussed, AWS managed image comes with a set of pre-built environments. If you have any additional softwares or the pre-built environments does not meet your needs, you can choose custom image option. And then you can choose the operating system and then the Docker images you have in your AWS account, or you can also choose external dockers based on a URL. For our demo, let's choose managed image. And then let's choose environment type as Ubuntu. Now these are the runtime environments supported by AWS managed image. Let's choose Node.js and runtime version as the latest one and the image version. Let's leave as latest one as well. And here we need to provide code build service rule. Code build uses this rule to call dependent AWS services for you, such as S3, CloudWatch, etc. Let's choose new service role option so that it creates a new role for us and assigns necessary privileges. If you are providing a role by yourself, make sure you assign right policies in order to access the AWS services such as S3, CloudWatch, etc. And then we can configure additional options from here. Important one is this VPC. We can choose a VPC and a subnet from which we would want to access certain resources such as RDS, EFS, etc. We can also beef up the compute from here. Default is 3 GB memory and two core vCPUs. And we can also add environment variables from here as well if you want them to be project specific rather than build specific. And here is where we define how code build should read build spec. This option specifies that we are providing a build spec via our source code. If so, we can use below input to configure the build spec relative location and its name if it does not exist directly under the root of our source code and if its name is not buildspec.yaml. We can also directly write commands in here if you simply want to run a single build command without any artifacts or we can write the yaml build commands directly here in this editor. Since we already have the build spec in our source code, Let's choose this option. And from here, we can choose the artifacts. Let's choose S3. I've created a bucket to store these artifacts. So let's choose this bucket. 
and let's give the name which will be the name for the folder or compressed file which contains the output artifacts and also let's give a path which will be prefixed with above name and we can also choose the namespace type the build id so the build id will be suffixed to the path something like this and we can choose the artifact packaging if you want them to be zipped we can choose zip for now let's leave it as none and we can specify logging options in here either cloudwatch or s3 or both let's enable cloudwatch let's give a log group name and a stream name all right let's go ahead and create the build project well we just created a template for the build to be performed not built anything yet we can start a new build from here and we can see all the build history in here and from here we can see all the build details the ones we just configured we can edit any options from here if you would like to and we can also create build triggers from here these are more like build schedulers which triggers the build based on the frequency you choose from here all right let's start the build from here and from this screen we can override any build options for this specific build all right let's start the build okay the build is in progress we can watch build logs from here and phase details from here let's tail the logs and see what's going on inside the build environment we can see it started to download the source code detected the build spec yaml file found phases in the yaml file and commands per phase and it completed the source code download and started with the install phase you can also watch current phase from here it is currently running our install phase command npm install so whatever std out logs we print from the commands we provided they will be displayed in here all right it completed install phase started pre build phase where our all test cases ran and all our seven test cases are passed and it started with the build phase and it completed the build phase and uploading the artifacts to s3 all right build has been completed successfully so let's go to s3 and refresh you can see it created a folder structure according to our options and then it created all the artifacts from our build command and upload it in here we can then take these artifacts and deploy to our prod or staging environment let's take a look at cloudwatch logs as well we can see entire build log history in here for troubleshooting and future reference and in our build project you can see the build history and you can perform various actions on this build such as view artifacts view logs view details and delete this build we can also watch metrics specific to this build project that is how many builds ran how many succeeded how many failed and how much time it took etc and from here we can also look at the entire build history for all the build projects and here we can also see the entire account metrics for all the build projects all right that is it for the code build in coming sessions we will use these artifacts and deploy and build an entire cd pipeline to see how we automate deployment for this ui